Good morning, people of Colvin and Dawa. As we listen to our reading today, it is the story of Joseph and his brothers that comes to us from several different chapters in the book of Genesis. We start in Genesis 37. Now Israel loved Joseph more than any other of his children, because he was the son of his old age, <clears throat> and had made him a long robe with sleeves. But when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peaceably to him. Once Joseph had a dream, and when he told it to his brothers, they hated him even more. He said to them, Listen to this dream that I dreamed. There we were, binding sheaves in the field. Suddenly my sheaf rose and stood upright. Then your sheaves gathered round it and bowed down to my sheaf. His brothers said to him, Are you indeed to reign over us? Are you indeed to have dominion over us? So they hated him even more because of his dreams and his words. So Joseph went after his brothers and found them at Dadam. They saw him from a distance, and before he came near to them, they conspired to kill him. They said to one another, Here comes this dreamer. Come now, let us kill him and throw him into one of the pits. Then we shall say that a wild animal has devoured him, and we shall see what will become of his dreams. But when Reuben heard it, he delivered Joseph out of their hands, saying, Let us not take his life. Reuben said to them, Shed no blood. Throw him into this pit here in the wilderness, but lay no hand on him, that he might rescue him out of their hand and restore him to his father. Then Judah said to his brothers, What profit is it if we kill our brother and conceal his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites and not lay our hands on him, for he is our brother, our own flesh. And his brothers agreed. When some Midianite traders passed by, they drew Joseph up, lifting him out of the pit, and sold him to the Ishmaelites for twenty pieces of silver. And they took Joseph to Egypt. When Reuben returned to the pit and saw that Joseph was not in the pit, he tore his clothes. He returned to his brothers and said, The boy is gone, and I, where can I turn? Then they took Joseph's robe, slaughtered a goat, and dipped the robe in the blood. They had the long robe with sleeves taken to their father, and they said, This we have found, and now see whether it is your son's robe or not. He recognized it and said, It is my son's robe. A wild animal has devoured him. Joseph is without doubt torn to pieces. Then Jacob tore his garments and put sackcloth on his loins and mourned his son many days. From chapter 50. Realizing that their father was dead, Joseph's brothers said, What if Joseph still bears a grudge against us and pays us back in full for all the wrong that we did to him? So they approached Joseph, saying, Your father gave this instruction before he died. Say to Joseph, I beg you, forgive the crime of your brothers and the wrong they did in harming you. Now therefore please forgive the crime of the servants of the God of your father. Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Then his brothers also wept, fell down before him, and said, We are here as your slaves. But Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid. Am I in the place of God? Even though you intended to do harm to me, God intended it for good, in order to preserve a numerous people, as he is doing today. So have no fear. I myself will provide for you and your little ones. In this way, he reassured them, speaking kindly to them. The word of the Lord. As an only child, I perhaps had a rosy view of sibling relationships. As I was growing up, I always wished for an older brother, preferably not like Joseph's older brothers. It would have been fun, I thought, to have someone to play with, someone to spend time with, someone to follow around after, someone to tell stories with as we grew older. Chris and I are both only children, so the idea of sibling rivalry was pretty foreign to us as we had our own two children. I read my share of articles and stories and books about sibling rivalry, both hysterically funny ones and ones that made me think. As I've gotten older and as I've watched other families, I've been able to be a bit more realistic 
about this ideal sibling that I had hoped for and the idea of bigger families. Perhaps my longing for a sibling is even stronger in adulthood. How much I would love for my children to have cousins to play with at family gatherings and grow up with. How much I would love to have a sibling to be a partner in caring for aging parents. But I have also learned that no sibling relationship is perfect, especially not as perfect as I used to believe them to be. No family is without its flaws or its conflicts. Every family at times needs grace and forgiveness to be lived out in our relationships. The Bible is a very honest book, and from the earliest chapters of the book of Genesis, we hear about human families and the brokenness that exists in them. We hear in Genesis about Cain and Abel and their rivalry that leads to violence. We hear about Jacob and Esau, the two twins who competed for their inheritance. Jesus tells us the story of the prodigal son and his difficult relationship with his older brother. The Bible honestly portrays the human brokenness and frailty that we can experience in our own lives and families. It doesn't hide it or minimize it. Then we have our reading today from the book of Genesis that tells us about Joseph's family. Joseph and his brothers are some of those descendants that God promised last week to Abraham. Abraham became the father of Isaac. Isaac became the father of Esau and Jacob. And thus, Abraham becomes the great-grandfather of Joseph and all his family. When Genesis tells us about Joseph's family, it's painfully evident from the beginning of the story that this family has quite a lot of sibling rivalry and jealousy going on. We begin by hearing that Joseph's father, Israel, who we also know as Jacob, loved Joseph more than the others. And so Israel, Jacob, makes Joseph a special robe with long sleeves. Then we hear that Joseph's brothers hated him even more and could not speak peaceably to him. Already, we have raging sibling rivalry, a parent's greatest nightmare, and it only gets worse from there. Joseph's story goes on to tell us about the dreams he has of greatness and how they show him ruling over his brothers. His story also tells us of how he would run to his father tattling about his older brothers when they were out in the fields tending the flock. Clearly, all of this is leading to a larger moment, a more dramatic moment in time when Joseph's brothers sell him into slavery, sell him off into Egypt, and then lie to their father, saying he has been killed. One of the blessings that I find in Joseph's story in the book of Genesis is it reminds me that even in the Bible, no family is perfect. Families have their struggles, families have their brokenness, families are families in all their strengths, joys, and weaknesses. The Bible is honest about that. The Bible never glosses over or ignores the reality that exists for Joseph's family and for ours. Another blessing that I find in Joseph's story is that it doesn't end when Joseph is sold off into slavery. Instead, it follows Joseph on his long, twisting journey into Egypt through his ups and downs, and then as his gift of dream interpretation helps him to provide food for Egypt and other people during a famine. In the book of Genesis, we are able to follow these twists and turns, these ups and downs, and it finally brings us to the reunion of a much older, much wiser Joseph when his family comes to him begging for food. His brothers come to Egypt because there is a famine in Israel and they are in desperate need of food. The conclusion of Joseph's story shows us that healing and forgiveness can be possible even where great hurts have occurred. Listen to Joseph's words to his brothers. Do not be afraid. Am I in the place of God even though you intended to do harm to me? God intended it for good, in order to preserve a numerous people, as he is doing today. So have no fear. I myself will provide for you and your little ones. We hear in this reunion 
that Joseph reassures his family and speaks kindly to them. He could have reacted much differently. He could have held a grudge or sent them away to starve. He could have jailed them. He could have spoken harshly to them. But Joseph was able to offer forgiveness and reconcile with his family, giving us hope for our own human relationships. As we hear Joseph's story today, it helps us reflect on our own families. We can give thanks for the blessings that they are to us, the joy they bring us, the companionship they have blessed us with in our lives. We can reflect on the times of love and support and laughter that have been shared. We can rejoice in those family moments. Joseph's story also helps us reflect on those places in our relationships that are not perfect, that might be strained or distant, that might need healing. This is the blessing of the Bible. It invites us into God's story with his people so it can be our story too. We thank God today for his word and for our families and for the promise of hope and healing. Amen. <music>